The following interview was conducted with William W. Carleton, the Leslie Morton Hutchins Professor Emeritus of Veterinary, Pen Veterinary Medicine for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on uh, November the 18th, 2009 at his residence in West Lafayette. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian, and his wife has just joined us. Welcome. Okay. Tell us a little bit about where you were born and your parents in early years. Well, I grew up in uh, Davis County, Kentucky. What year were you born in? Uh, 1929. Okay. And what was the month? Uh, June. Okay. Uh-huh. June the 17th, in fact, 1929. In, where was it again? In Hutchins? Huh? Hutch where was it? Where, city? Oh, it, it's county. county. Actually, it wasn't born in the city. It oh. was <laughs> born in the county. county. Davis County. D-A-V-I-E-S-S. -S, Davis County. Okay. Uh, what state? And the, uh, That's Kentucky. Okay, good. And Go ahead. the... Uh, uh, and the city that's there is called Orangeboro. Okay, great. Uh, All right. And I went to to uh, grade school there. Uh, well, grade school is called Thruston. It's no longer there. The building's been raised and torn down. That's so and then, of and then Davis County High School was okay. for the high Tell school. Tell us a little about uh, was the school large? The grade school that you went to? The high school? No, it was uh, my class had about sixty-five to seventy students. I can't remember exactly. Sure. Although I was class president in my senior year. And, um, Any other clubs that you were, were involved well, in? Well, I want to show. Maybe I'll show you my thing, my yearbook. Well, when you finish, you can show me your. Yeah, yeah that's uh, good. And well, and well, I was honor student, president, and. What kind of were you taking a college prep course? No, that that wasn't in that wasn't in the that wasn't in the picture at oh. <laughs> Davis County. And, in the 40s. Just a regular general, <laughs> just, general it was education. Just very general. GED, uh, right? Actually, uh, you know, it was uh, the requirements. Uh, you had to have oh, what, yeah. a couple of semesters of math and four years, I think, of English and the typical sure, thing. There. And the faculty was small and not particularly distinguished, although I had some great uh, teachers. Yeah. Uh, was it close to where you lived? Well, no, it was a bus? a bus ride of 11 miles. Ooh, okay. So, uh, and uh, one of the things that, uh, you know, one of our class reunions, which I organized being the class president, we, uh, we had uh, things to write down that you remember. And I remember the, the bus that came and picked us up had a big sweep. I mean, it wasn't just us in the small area. And some of these uh, students would get on the bus hours before we reached, because the, the school was in the city and the, and the county was actually surrounding it. And that bus had a heater on it, but it would only extend about <laughs> one st one group of seats behind. And the and the girls and and I never saw boys, but the girls were very often were crying and because their feet were cold, that they had to stand out and the, because they had to walk. I was lucky. I. I, the bus would come into the little road that our farm was located on, and it would go down to a church and turn around and come back, and we could stand by the window and see the bus go over, and we could come out. <laughs> you lucked out. <laughs> it was, <laughs> there wasn't much else, to, wasn't much, much else luck on that old farm, but that was one of the things. We didn't have to stand out in the cold. Sure. We could stand in the house. So Did, were you, did your father farm? Was that what you Yeah, it was about? a little old 78-acre hill farm with a, uh, one and a half, or no, actually 1.3 acres of Burley tobacco allotment, which what we lived on. And that was uh, that was the income. There was a little corn, but that went for the cattle and the whole mules. So, uh, and uh, then but anyway, we we had uh, you know. So you had a good. Uh, and after we graduated from high school, then what came next? Well, I, I, the summer. The summer of '48, when I graduated in '48, I went. I started at the University of Kentucky and stayed there uh, mm -hmm. through uh, all the whole year. And, and by the time I was a, a, a sophomore in terms of tenure, I was a senior in terms of what I had taken because I took a nine hours in the summer and a twenty to twenty-two to twenty-three in the. Uh, it was a, a animal science curriculum. And uh, 
But in 51, of course, the Korean War was on, and I enlisted in the Air Force and was there for four years. Okay. But one of the nice things that happened to me, <laughs> it wasn't too many, but uh, is that during that time, uh, there was a program they called Operation Bootstrap. And if you had uh, only a one semester remaining on the program to graduate, they would send you back. So they sent me back to University of Kentucky because I entered the Air Force with uh, only needing 13 hours to graduate. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so I, I took the 13 hours and I had a wonderful time because I had money, which I never had before. <laughs> and I had a 13 hours with nothing <laughs> compared. Not after comparing. <laughs> no, no. And, uh, and I dated and had a wonderful time. So I, that was a that six months was a was a delight. Yeah. And then, um, what did what, when then when you graduated, we were still in the service. Though, yeah, you know, yeah. And I was there for back. another uh, another at least a year and a half. And while I was there at, on and uh, I was at station at McDill uh, Air Force Base in Tampa, Florida. And while I was there, they had a uh, people that would come over from Florida Florida Southern College and teach courses, and I took enough to get a, a BS degree in humanities while, while okay. I was there. Good. Because, well, that was, uh, that was uh, really a significant uh, part of the education because it was all things like music appreciation, art appreciation, philosophy, history, uh, English lit, uh, world literature, uh, and actually that was... Uh, that's kind of rounded out. That here. was a, that was a well. Of course, in the, in the ag curriculum, there was very few, sure. very few uh, uh, open spots, and they were not usually taken up by things like that. Right. And so anyway, that was a that was kind of a delightful thing because they would they bring the professors over and and they would give uh, lectures and so, and it got me into trouble too on occasion because it was called special services. This area was, and I I'd, I'd leave my. I leave my <laughs> laboratory. I was in what they call field maintenance and radio, and and we repaired uh, uh, equipment that that had ceased to function properly. So uh, I, I was there for I don't know uh, maybe two and a half or th years of my four years. Uh, I was always in uh, well. I went to Texas first, and then after Texas, I was shipped to uh, Scott Air Force Base in Illinois, and I stayed there for a year in in tech school. And there's one of the, what happened there turned me against the military because while you were in tech school, you can't be promoted. And I was already a year and something in, and I was first stationed at McDill. I was in what they call flight line maintenance, and there were guys there that had been in there three months, and they were already promoted. To corporal, and I was still a private, so I was unhappy. I was unhappy. <laughs> but I had three months uh, temporary duty in in England, and I went to uh, Cambridge and went to London, and and uh, and one of the I think one of the things there was there's a, a picture of a man, Sir Dudley Carleton, who was a che checker of the exchequer or something like that back in a long time ago, about 16th century something. <laughs> so maybe the Carltons go back to that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You got a long lineage. But anyway, we were there. The year we were there is the year that uh, Elizabeth became queen. Elizabeth II. Oh, that was nice. You got to see the coronation. Well, I didn't see the coronation, but we saw the aftermath. So the coronation, but we went in and all the decorations stuff was still up. So sure. So we, we saw that. So That's kind of nice. Nasty. Yeah. Yeah. So... And uh, that was in, what, 50, probably 53. Two, I think, is when she came to the throne. Okay, like 52. That. I think anyway, I, uh, uh, and I guess there, I, I imagine there wasn't an ice cube in all of England because they did everything. The beer was in the wine. Everything was room temperature. Right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and, if you, if, and you, I went to one place and asked for a, a chilled wine. And they put ice in it. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> well, anyway, to get back to where was where well, we then, kind of uh, when, you got on. Out, no, when you got out of the service, uh, after uh, the 55, service. 55, and okay. I met my wife um, about a year before I 
uh, left the service, and I left the service on the what the thirteenth, and we were married on the twenty second. And and uh, did you meet her in Florida? Cause yeah, you, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. It was a blind date type of thing. So <laughs> anyway, it was. Uh, that was another bit of good luck. Anyway, there you go. Yeah. Put that in there. Uh, uh, exactly. And uh, uh, and then um, when I left Kentucky, uh, you, they would accept your application for uh, admission to the veterinary medicine if you had a, a bachelor of science degree in some phase of agriculture, and I had that in animal science. But while I was in the military. They changed the rules, which you know, what you always do, and they had to have, I had to have a, a physics course with a laboratory, which I hadn't had. I had to have medical vocabulary and then mm. something else. So I applied and got an assistantship to get a master's degree because I got out of the service in January and you can't, uh, and you have to apply uh, to get into the fall because they only accept in the fall, you don't accept so. Anyway, I, I, I picked up a master's degree in, in veterinary uh, physiology. Not well, it's animal physiology. It wasn't particularly veterinary, but it was animal physiology. And, um, yeah, is this in Kentucky? At Kentucky. All right, okay. And then uh, while we were there, our son was born, Ronald. He's now in Florida. And I applied and was accepted at Auburn, and I went there. And, and How did you happen to select that school? Probably? Well, uh, Kentucky had a program. Okay. Uh, but they, Kentucky had no vet school, though. No, and they, and they still, still don't. And, they still no, don't, no, know. and that's probably one of the greatest things they ever decided not to do is that. <laughs> not to get, because they're very expensive. Okay. And, and they're, and so, but, uh, but anyway, they... Don't uh, they have re reciprocity if they come to the Indiana to uh, the vet school here? I don't think oh, so. Oh, they don't. No, hmm. okay. no there, are other, there are other people do. But Auburn accepted, at that time, Tennessee, Mississippi, Florida, Kentucky... Uh, and of course, they all have veterinary schools now, Tennessee and Florida. And, right. Um, and, uh, but at so, that time, they didn't. No, and okay. so there was, uh, there was a. Cl they would accept, I think, ten students from Kentucky, and I was one of the ten. Okay. And they, they, they the, <clears throat> the contribution was that you didn't have to pay out-of-state fees for uh, admission. I mean, for tuition. So. Uh, and that was that was the early oh, scene. Yeah. And that of course that that's helpful and if we I had the G. I. Bill. Right. And uh, but it was a dismal it was dismal in so many districts. We had no money in yeah, no what? No money, no money. It was the bad. What was the housing like? Was it your well, we camping? lived in what barracks. I mean, they'd moved some of the barracks and, uh, and but <laughs> like our was, permanent temporaries were. Our yeah, but used it to was be. very good because uh, yeah, you could stay there with uh, all utilities. For thirty-five dollars a month, wow! Which was and you could do cooking and everything there. Too. Oh yeah, it had great. two bedrooms and a little study, plus a, a, a living room and a sure. kitchen. No, it was. Uh, that was all right. These were oh yeah, it was fine. And and most of the people there, uh, as students, were in the same boat. Sure. There. And, you know, some of them. I worked at the theater, uh, and Jean worked uh, at various places, uh, uh -huh. but. She would make two hundred dollars a month, and we had to spend twenty five dollars a week on the on someone to care for the children. Sure. Did you have more than one at that time. Well, we ha our daughter was born while we were there in veterinary okay. medicine, going to school. So, yeah. but anyway, uh, we made it, and then I decided I didn't want to practice, that I wanted to be a pathologist. So we had to come here. We came here. We didn't. Uh, what about? Uh, MIT was that? Uh, well, that's my first job. Okay. Yeah. So after you, you got after I got my PhD, I, I went there for two and a half years. Uh, was that like a postdoc? No, no, I was on the on the faculty. Um, actually, um, there's a story there. Dr. Paul Newburn, who was uh, uh, in the Department of Animal Science at Auburn, and one of the years I was there, I fed rats for them, and he talked me into applying for a postdoc. Uh, fellowship uh, and to go to the University of Missouri when I applied for it, but it didn't come through. So we had to do something. So I called around, and they had a, an opening here and at Purdue. Okay. And so I came here, and okay. And that uh, would have been what year did you? Well, I graduated in '60, yeah. and I came here in '60, the fall of '60. Okay. And then I did my PhD and left F in '62. 
Okay. <laughs> After you got your PhD, then you left, right? Went to MIT. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. um, having <clears throat> having already done a master's, uh, uh, the, many of the some of the things that might have required, uh, I got out. So I got out quickly, within two years. Did my research and wrote the dissertation. So, uh, and so we went to uh, Bedford, Mass, and stayed there for about a year. Then we used the GI thing and and purchased a house. And then uh, I had the Dr. Getch. Uh, Wanted me to ask me if I'd come back and look at a position here, and I, mm -hmm. and there was lots of things I, I liked about uh, New England, but the damn traffic wasn't one of them. And we lived in Bedford, which is about eighteen or nineteen miles from from Cambridge, Cambridge, yeah. and, and and you know, and if the first it's snowflakes worse. and for and and the first snowflakes mean you didn't get home until about three hours when you usually would. Do. And of course, we only had we didn't have any money. We only had one old car, and so one year I, I had a carpool, and you had to drive all over the world to pick up everybody and take them. And then one year I, I rode the train. There was one train down in the morning and one train back in the afternoon. And, and so, what happened is that the children were in bed when I left, and they were in bed when I got home. <laughs> so I didn't see them till the weekend. And so, so there was it was. But the science and the and the activity was just very invigorating. But the uh, so anyway, I I I was offered this position and I came back here in '65. Okay. Okay. And uh, and stayed here. Okay. Now tell us a little about. Go ahead and talk about your research and all. Well, all the good uh, stuff. Uh, I had done some work on. Uh, Actually, the copper deficiency. Uh, I did my PhD on that in chickens. Uh, it produces a, a plethora of various kinds of lesions, but mostly cardiovascular. Uh, but uh, and then I kind of switched over after I went to MIT because we were working on mycotoxin there, uh, and it was one of the most interesting aspects because the aflatoxins were just discovered. From the, the aflatoxins. The aflatoxins. Yeah, uh -huh. They were just discovered, and in fact, they were working on the on the structure of it, and then it was developed there at MIT by the people in in the chemistry department and the people in the in the food science. It was a department of food science and nutrition that I joined, and it's because of Dr. Newbern, as I begin to say. Mm -hmm. uh, he asked. He called me and wanted to know if I would come up there and. Work with him, and I I liked him. I like what he did, so I I made the trip up there. But <laughs> that's another interesting thing. The MIT paid about uh, ninety percent prestige and ten percent money. <laughs> they were not. It's all in the name. They and you had to get your own summer salary. They paid you a nine months salary over twelve months, and so by the time you got through all that business. Whatever you got is in your summer salary you already owed. <laughs> so anyway, but anyway, uh, it was good experience. And we did yeah. yes, and and uh, uh, you go to we there was a, a big meeting that held in Atlantic City, um, and people would come. Few people, and particularly from our department, and other departments would come there to, to give a little. And I never saw such uh, enthusiasm and just. Rushing out to get the person and, and and see if there was something else that they hadn't reported that, so it was an exciting time. Sure. And and I never ran up on anything else uh, since then that that had that same type of, of uh, mystique Feeling. about it. Yeah. Right. And so, anyway, but so I began interested in toxicology, and the position here was really related to toxicology, and so. I came back here, and at that time I had a couple of NIH grants and and, uh, and a USDA grant, and and then I had about ten graduate students that developed not to the first year, but over the first few years because I had monies. Never had monies after that, but <laughs> it was so difficult. And then eventually, the I must have been in mycotoxins for. 15 years in terms of research and had a number of graduate students that did their PhD with that. Uh, but eventually the the interest in mycotoxins 
withered away. How was the source for funding? Was it? Did you get some stuff from? You said NIH. Well, I had some NIH and I had some uh, private ones, uh, and then some uh, USDA type of mm -hmm. monies, and uh, and of course the students uh, that I had, uh, some were provide their funds were uh, for was provided by the school, and some we had NIH postdoctoral students, and so we had a, and we had E. I. Lilly. They had. Uh, a couple of, uh, of stipends you know, for graduate students. Mm -hmm. So we had a variety of students. And um, and they worked, for the most part, during this one phase. Uh, early on, they worked on copper deficiency. Uh, and then later on, uh, we, we began a series of studies on copper chelation to produce a copper deficiency. And interesting enough, they produced all kinds of lesions, uh, and we had a number of people. They produced, uh, uh, like Cooperzone was the name of one of those chelators, um, and they produced uh, a spongiform encephalopathy, which, uh, uh, which, and then there was, interesting enough, there was two other compounds that produced the same type of lesions. Arsenicotinic acid hydroxide, which is a treatment for tuberculosis, was one of them. And so we worked on that. We worked on neuropathology, and I, uh, I was interested in becoming kind of proficient in that area. And then, uh, I wrote a couple of NIH grants, and they didn't, they didn't buy it. So they did. So that's when I went into the mycotoxins, sure. <laughs> especially because I had monies for that. And right. then, and then neuropathology. So anyway, most of the time in, in terms of research activity was, was. Study of the mycotoxins. We studied uh, for great variety: citron and ochre toxin, uh, T2 toxin, patulin, uh, great, uh, great variety. Of, uh, because there is no defined uh, morphological uh, studies of these uh, of these toxins in various species, and so that's the, that's what most of the students were working on the pathology. They would also do electron microscopy, and sometimes. Enzyme right. histochemistry, and so we had a variety of approaches. Uh, but um, one of the main one of the main uh, objectives of the program was to have the students do something that they could get done, and that you could be published. Right. And so we had uh, we had I don't know how many publications. You have quite a, quite yeah, a lengthy number list. of publications and right. uh, book chapters. And so we we. We established, uh, you know, Your niche. fairly good program. Right. In, in, uh, you had a grant in '68 for the Indiana Tuberculosis Association. Yeah, yeah. That was to study ultra aspects of encephalopathy in dust and stuckling. Yeah, ducklings. yeah. I had, I well, we worked in guinea pigs and ducklings and pigs and dogs. We yeah. worked in all species. Sure. In rodents, various rodents, mice, rats, hamsters, uh -huh. gerbils. <laughs> Uh, and of course, there were differences, as you might imagine, in how they responded and what was a target organ and stuff. That's um, interesting on the TB because that that, that um, wasn't as as prevalent as it was year year. Oh ago. no 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 that's, no that's no. When no. I saw that grant, I thought yeah. I'm. Re well, I I tried all kinds of little places to get sure, money. So, sure. And so, we got some success and some we didn't. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, but anyway, the, uh, we had uh, a lot of uh, lots of good students, uh, and a lot of them year. went on and did very well. Oh yes, <laughs> and in fact, it wasn't. I don't think uh, a number of my students went on to work for industry, uh -huh. and and I never had one that their first job didn't give pay more than my. Job so, but I was happy for them because sure. if they, I mean, I could have left and I, I, I interviewed one time to head pathology at Upjohn, and no, at uh, not Upjohn but Abbott, and I, I would have had to leave my two kids here in high school and, and go up there, and I decided. That's up. That was in Michigan, right up. No, down. no, it was in uh, right Upjohn. outside of Chicago, oh, okay. north of Chicago. Okay, and. And they've doubled my salary. I mean, the offer was double my salary. But, and of course, the kids always said, "Well, you should have taken it." But I, I didn't want to. Right. I didn't want to pull them out of their school. Sure. Or anything, so. It's in, anyway. I. It's uh, interesting though that many people that have gone into industry, 
when a lot of them have to take early retirement and things of that sort, or say in academe, it's not, yeah, you can yeah, stretch what? it out. <laughs> yeah, well, so well, I've, similar stories, which you're sharing, I've heard that I could yeah. have, but I'm glad I didn't. Yeah, I have no regrets. Yeah. I mean, I, I was lucky enough that uh, with the activity. Sometimes it's the, 55, you know, yeah. in these days. <laughs> huh? Sometimes they have to go at 55. You yeah, know? yeah. Well, and, and of course, I've had economy. some students that were just released. I mean, when they cut down the laboratories. Right. But anyway. Uh, uh, but it's nice to be considered. Oh, yeah. And I, I, when I s turned that down, I said, well, I'm not going to bother with this stuff anymore. Going look, because that was a wonderful. Actually, it, it turned out that uh, uh, they wanted to know if I, if I could recommend somebody. And one of my graduate students was with Atlas Chemical. And they hired him, and he eventually became vice president. <laughs> and with big salaries, big money, <laughs> but I don't know. He, I may not have done as well as he is. You know, you don't know what sure. how you oh, you yeah. can be very good at some things, but that doesn't mean you're going to be good at everything. Right. So, anyway, he. Uh, well, that's nice. That's a good he, contact. Yeah, he's uh, he's, uh, and he uh, paid me back in some consulting activities sure. and so. Right. Uh, it comes back. It's yeah, nice. and uh, the. Let's talk about when you got that uh, distinguished professor. Tell how that came about. Were you surprised or how did? Oh, the Leslie Morton Hutchings. Right. Yes, cause because that's, that's the name of the first dean. Yeah. Yes, that, that's right. And he was only uh, for a short time. He had been in the veterinary science. Yeah. For oh, a long and that time. department. He was the head of the department for a number Before of years. Before the school started. And, uh, and then he was named dean, and apparently he was terrible. You know, wonderfully talented. Uh, and the school, uh, it might have been something even more than it is now if he if he had not died because uh, he was. Uh, some people have shared he was sick and he wasn't in the dean very long and he became. No, ill. no, no. He was ill by the time they got. He was. He had some kind of. I'm not even sure they have the diagnosis, but it kind of a granulomatous, uh, proliferative lesions that. Ex that actually, but they, I've also heard some of the people that are that that are in a position to know because they were here. I was not here sure. until six. I came in uh, sixty. Uh -huh. uh, that the chemotherapy is what killed him, you know, because mm. that's back in the oh yeah uh, back in a uh, different time. Yeah, but anyway, in the, in the it, but certainly, well, Doctor Tuit. I worked with Dr. Tuitt from Botany for many years, and he was a wonderful man. And he had chronic lymphocytic leukemia. And uh, it was the secondary things that finally took him, not the leukemia, because he, the, the chemotherapy uh, it destroyed all of his immune possibilities. And so he died mm -hmm. with probably more related to an infectious process. Rather yeah, sounds like it. The, so. yeah. But, but anyway, the, the distinguished. Yeah, yeah. well, that that uh, that is something that you're nominated for, and they and you don't know that it's happening. Uh, okay. And then you you they spring it on you, and you say, "My goodness." <laughs> Why me, Lord? Right? Yeah. Well, that's very it, nice. I was probably a great overachiever in any sense, and of course, <laughs> I, I, I mean, did you get to pick the name or when they when they? Uh, no, no, they do that. They already. Yeah, okay. and actually. Uh, uh, Dr. Hutching was actually a microbiologist. Okay. And he was not a pathologist, but it didn't matter. They just named you. And of course, one of our other faculty members, Dr. Gustafson, who's a virologist, he was he was given a, a distinguished one from the pathologist in the department. So anyway, kind of. But anyway, uh, it was a great honor, obviously, and it's very, I'm very. Very pleased with, with that, right. and, yeah. and of course, I have a lot of other nice things happen to me too. Because you know, Purdue gave me an honorary Doctor of Science, and uh, how did that come up, come about? Uh, I usually ask people. Sometimes they're, I, I share one story. I was interviewing somebody, and they got some award, but it was a real surprise. But the person said, "I was at this event, and I looked around the room, and there were some people there that normally don't come." To this particular oh, gathering, yeah. Yeah. Well, lo and behold, yeah. when it got down to the program, I got an award. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it uh, it was a you know it's a, a surprise since you don't know it's going to happen. But I the two other 
awards that I f particularly uh, uh, enjoy having is uh, the distinguished uh, distinguished member of the American College of Veterinary Pathologists. I was its president for uh, along the way, and uh, the other one is, uh, uh, of course, the Lifetime Achievement Award in Toxicology and and uh, the uh, distinguished alumnus of the of the of the College of Veterinary Medicine at Auburn. Uh, they made me a distinguished alumnus. Yes. Oh, that's very nice. Yes. Very nice. Yeah. So anyway. Uh, and that uh, honorary degree from, from Purdue is nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, there's a f other things, but those are the ones that are probably. And then, of course, I, I'm very happy to receive an award from the Society of Toxicology for Education because we trained all those people in toxicologic pathology, and they went out mostly. And okay. of my, my students, many of them went into... Uh, as I said, into pharmaceutical and chemical and other places, right. and did very well. Okay. And of course, when I had all those students and that money, and I never walked any place; it was always running. <laughs> That's what I said. Always. <laughs> and uh, and not only that, but uh, other things that have uh, been rewarding, I suppose, is uh, being on. Uh, Editorial boards, and because you, uh, so you have to you have to throw your um, amount of work into the big pot because somebody's got to do it, and they have to do it for you. So you have you have the obligation, I think, to do it for other people. Right. So we we had that, and we had a I was um, editor of uh, Food and Chemical Toxicology, which has changed its name now, but the journal and we started it actually about a guy, a, a toxicologist up at uh, Dow Chemical and I were first, the first editors of that journal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah, on yeah. the International Journal of Toxic, you were a member of the expert panel too at one time, were you not? Yeah, yeah yes, okay. yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, and uh, well, one of the, uh, I did quite a bit of work, but I got paid for the the work for the Lessons Cosmetic Ingredient Review Panel. Okay. Uh, that, uh, that was a wonderful thing because it uh, it paid some money, <laughs> and but it required quite a bit of work. But but anyway, I had a number of uh, you know uh, National Academy of Sciences. I did a number of those different uh, things. Over did you ever take a sabbatical? Yeah, I took a six months. I went down to uh, to uh, North Carolina to a, a laboratory down there. Um, and it, it was a nice, it was a nice break. Mm -hmm. And that was near the end, though, because I had, to, you know, it took a sabbatical. You, you were committed to come back and spend sure. at least one year, and right. I did. And uh, but it was, it was a nice, uh, it was a nice tour. Um, but then, '93, uh, I had no more monies, and I finished my graduate students, and I taught all the courses I taught. And so I retired. Okay. Did you did, uh, could, uh, had you gone on halftime, or did you elect to? Do well, that? I didn't elect to. I, okay. And of course, looking back now, it might have been not a bad idea. Okay. Uh, that was available at that time. Though, well, wasn't I it? think so. Yeah, I, I'm I not can't for remember sure. when they brought I'm not it in. for sure. I know a number of our people now sure. do it, but right. I, I don't know. Uh, at least I didn't. I don't think I even pursued it because uh, one thing I didn't want to do is. Sit around and draw a salary and do, and, do, and not contribute. I mean, I I had a good, I had a good career and I wasn't going to spoil it by right. saying that son of a gun, you know, sits around does nothing and uh, and I was too late to go off and recapture something in terms of another area of, of ex to study and and getting money is particularly if you're in what age I was and that type of thing. It's it was, kind of hard. It, it, so it was time to, in, in that sense, it was time to retire. Sure. Because I'd finished teaching. I had I taught a, a number of graduate courses and developed them and taught them. Mm -hmm. So, and that, that particular aspect of my career is, is probably one of the reasons for including me in a number of these things because I, I, I did work hard, and we did. We had a wonderful program in pathology. Yeah. Uh, with we had a good faculty, and it was 
people like Dr. Van Vliet and Dr. Olander and Dr. Harrington and myself and other people in clinical pathology. So we had a, we had, and we had at one time as many as fifteen or sixteen students in the mm, in the program. Good. So, yeah. and they, they, uh, it, it was a combined residency and PhD because they, they had to do necropsies and and read tissues as a part of a diagnostic service as well as do their research sure. and take it courses. So it was a it was a tough it right. was a tough road to hold, but you got through it with you were very happy with it. So right. You know, I had asked you earlier, the Indian the school of Indian University School of Medicine at the Lafayette campus, you I had asked you, you said you did teach a few uh, I, I taught a I taught a section on ophthalmic pathology yeah. okay. about three That's times. Fine. I think it was three times I did that. Okay. But they they went and got some other people to do it. Um, okay. <clears throat> Yeah. Uh, anything that? Uh, what about family? You do you had two children? Yes. Did they go to Purdue? Uh, my son did. Uh, my, you have a son my, and a daughter. Yeah. Uh -huh. My daughter. We lost our daughter. So she. Uh, but she went to uh, Auburn after two years at at uh, uh, Center College in Kentucky. Uh huh. And then she went to uh, Auburn. Uh, and graduated there, and sh and we have two grandchildren, which are her children. Uh, How old are the grandchildren? Well, the granddaughter is uh, twenty, oh, okay. twenty five, okay. and the grandson is is uh, twenty three, and he's here at, at Purdue. Well, my granddaughter graduated here. Oh, good. She's now at uh, up at Fort Wayne, going to nursing. She's going into nursing. She, she, uh, but your grandson is, is a student at Purdue. Yeah, and he's finishing up. He'll graduate in Jan in December, and uh, he's in communication. Oh, good. So. You can do your marketing for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a he's a character. Well, we love them both. So that's what we have left of our daughter. Yeah, that's nice. Well, her husband is still alive. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's remarried. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that's nice that they came here. Oh yes! Oh yeah. Well, they, they they he works for Purdue. Uh, he was he's been there. Oh, uh, your son-in-law. Son-in-law. Mm -hmm. And so they they came back here. He's in the, the electrical. Is he still? Does he still live around here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's still working here at Purdue. Uh huh. Um, um, okay. Um. What are any activities in retirement? You want to... Well. <laughs> Anything? Nothing major. Travel? Well, we we did we have you know we did a few things. We okay. got a few meetings and stuff. But uh, I did. Uh, well, the department uh, was there's a, in the department there are certain courses that were called uh, key courses, courses that are required in order to get the degree, and they hadn't didn't have anyone to teach the neoplastic diseases, and I had taught it before, so they. They brought me back for one semester to uh, oh, good. to teach the new. And I, when I had it all together, uh, the Michigan State Veterinary School wanted some wanted it taught, and I went up there and taught it to that their class too. So that's that's nice. Uh, I've d I did a little bit of consulting, and, but now I, I haven't done anything recently because I'm just too old and out of it. Well, it's uh, hard. With, then you had that surgery this year with the oh there yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, but. But uh, we we watch a lot of movies, my wife and I, and uh, and we. Uh, and you keep in touch with the grandchildren. Oh yeah, there right. he's my grandson is here almost every day. He comes in to use the computer. <laughs> and, uh, so it's close at hand, and there's no yeah. there's no no standing line. No, or whatever. no, no, there's no line. He no. comes in, he and he closes the door and goes and does what he does. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's nice. Do you have a? Um, Favorite? Do you have a Purdue tradition that comes to mind? An outstanding event? Anything special? Well, Do you ever go to athletics? Do huh? you go to in the football or basketball? Well, uh, when I first came back here, we we went to both basketball and sure because I was here, you know, in the time of Rick Mount and, and that, that. I was at the game the night he set that record. Is that I'll, right? I'll never well, forget that. Just think just what it would have done if he'd had the three point shot. I know. 
I know. I mean, he I would, know, he, I know. They wouldn't be able to count it. <laughs> and it just, I had, it was just serendipity because I had tickets with a, at that particular year with a, a colleague who's now retired and, and uh, left the community. It just happened to be at that game. Mm -hmm. And I can still remember it was great. You know, yeah. it was wonderful. Yeah, well, I, because he was a pure shooter. My God. Yes, of course, he was. that was a great team with, yeah. with a little guy. What was his name? He was a short guard, fast as a. I can't remember because yeah, it's been a yeah. while. Fast, he was fast as a, as he could be, and of course they had. Remember, and then for a long time they had Lebanon, the home of Rick Mount, but they yeah, were, they don't well, have geez, that's been a long, long time ago. <laughs> right. I mean, the whole new generation has come and gone twice. <laughs> they would say, "Who is that? Who yeah. was that guy?" Yeah, but he right. was something, all right. He but, sure was. But I guess he never got his team to the state finals. He never won a state final. Yeah. But, Billy Keller. Oh, Billy Keller. Little yeah. Billy Keller, sure. they call him. Yeah. yeah. And then there was another guy who was a dang good, he was a forward. I can't remember who played uh, Who played? That was a good team. Team. But yeah. they went to the Final Four. Actually, they went to the, to the, to the championship game, and UCLA knocked them off. <laughs> Johnny was, Wooden. Uh, yeah, they knocked off a lot of, a lot of. Yeah. Right, yeah. No, I... I uh, do you have an outstanding event? Anything? Well, outstanding event. Well, of me. <laughs> well, I think uh, receiving the doctor of, honorary doctor of science is probably right at, at the commencement and putting the the and thing over hooded. me. And so, and uh, that was there with Bering and his wife. That was when you, when, when was when President Bering was the president. When Bering was president. President. Yeah. 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 Okay. And. Uh, that was probably as, and of course, learning that I was a uh, distinguished, Leslie Morton Hutchins, uh, you know, that that was a good, that was good time. Good. Took you know, it was just remarkable in a sense that, you know, you you you're doing your job you, as you see it, and then you're a little bit surprised when somebody looks upon it as being something extraordinary Extra or special. at least. Uh, so uh, anyway, but you just work hard. And yeah. I did work hard. I know. I did work hard. Um, uh, I'm going to leave it. Uh, I'll let you do some summary or anything that I didn't ask, anything that you'd like to, um, you think. Well, I, I'll get a chance to edit. <laughs> because I've, I've seen some of this stuff written after, you know what? After death, <laughs> it just didn't make much sense. <laughs> we can always make some changes. Well, that. That's nice. It's not a, a nice thing, but it's a, it's a part of the... The fabric of of things is that four of my graduate students have died. Approximately out of how many do you think you probably had? Well, I had thirty PhDs and eight uh, that master's degree program. But uh, were they die at a relatively young age? You think? Well, uh, the last one died. He was seventy-two, Doctor Bata, and Doctor Check. He was only sixty-five. He must have had a massive heart attack or something. And then um, I have one student by the name of Zucker, and he had mesothelioma, and mm. had to kill him. And who was the other one? Check, checked and Bada and oh, Doctor uh, Kelly. He was one of my early students, and he had a metastatic uh, carcinoma of the lungs that went to his brain. So, that's good stuff. so that's a sad. Sad yeah. part of it, but uh, living to eighty—that's probably one that's of the things. That's kind of good. That's <laughs> yeah. right. Yeah, that's very good. So I don't know of any. Um, I had a wonderful, wonderful career here. Good. Uh, and you decide to stay in the community. You don't. You don't go snow with oh, snowbirds. No, I mean, yeah. uh, my son lives in uh, Wellington, Florida, and from about May to September, you can't touch anything in the. On your car, I mean, unless you have gloves or there, and so, it, if you go south uh, to live, I mean, then you have all this summer stuff, so you have to stay in where it's air conditioned, and then up here we have to stay in when it's winter time and it gets real cold. <laughs> right. But but the, the fall here is so beautiful is. and so nice. I mean, I have no desire to go to Arizona or Florida. Not to stay. I mean, I don't mind going Christmas time and see my son. And, sure. And uh, 
but I. This is where your roots are. Which yeah, is and this and it's a nice community. It I is. think uh, very although, nice. Although they're screwing it up with traffic. <laughs> right. <laughs> just, just, just. That always comes. Yeah. yeah. Right. You can't have people without traffic like you can't have shade without leaves. <laughs> right. But. Uh, <coughs> So anyway, I guess that's... Uh, Is that pretty much covered? Today? Yeah, we, okay. we were busy. We were busy. And the, uh, we're, we worked hard. Right. And we did well. And Well, I, I'm i happy with whatever we did. Right. I, I'm sure there's some things we could have done more of, but I don't know what it was. I think you did really well. And we're well recognized. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, and I did a lot of teaching. I did a lot of teaching, and I... Graduate teaching. I, I did very little undergraduate. And right. Okay. I developed those uh, courses, courses that in, you mentioned, in right. ophthalmic pathology and muscle pathology and neoplastic diseases and and laboratory animal diseases. So okay. it's uh, and, and, uh, and you had a lot of publications, which is good. Well, I had a number of graduate students. They all published right. three or four papers. So. Right. I was on several, and then I had papers of my own sure. as senior author. But, right. Uh, very good. Dr. Cotton, I want to thank you very much for this well, opportunity. Well, it's my, my pleasure, pleasure to meet you. And again, uh, you my know.